And I think what I say. <laughs> you get the money. <laughs> You're not even sponsored. So, yeah. so thanks a lot. Uh, as I said, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Andrea Zulian. I'm a uh, senior product manager in Swisscom, a major telecommunication company in Switzerland. Switzerland is not a big country, and Swisscom, by the way, is the major company there. Um, I work with Amancio for the last four or five years, and uh, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Amancio. Um, yeah, work with Andrea together first as API engineer, then as technical lead, then product owner, now API product manager. And I'm from a from a small uh, Swiss IT consulting uh, boutique uh, called uh, Innovation Process Technology. So, um, what's about API product management? So it's about coming from inside in to outside um, in. And um, what does it have? It has to do with a Rubik's cube. Maybe um, probably you always uh, already saw a big gigantic image of an IT enterprise architecture diagram with hundreds of applications, thousands, thousands of uh, dependencies, and it's really complex. And if you put, put it into a 3D, you would probably get a, um, a such a Rubik's cube. And you know, uh, when you want to change something in your IT infrastructure, you change it this way, but it has impacts on the other side, and it's really complicated to do things. And the problems of APIs is to simplify this one. And what we did in the, uh, a while ago, uh, we really tried to simplify and make, make uh, all the applications in the back, uh, back end really accessible to the outside. So we defined 100 APIs and put it into the backlog. And then wouldn't it be great if you can just instantly solve it? And now it's really solved. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, so but the point here, so let's say, uh, we were really proud of that, 100 APIs, we simplified our backend structure, and then we, uh, then we met the customer and we said, hey listen, we have a really simple accessible API portfolio, you can use it, please, uh, uh, please use it, and uh, let's make some business out of it. And uh, the customer looked at the, looked at the Rubik's Cube, or at our API portfolio, and he said, well, uh, it's a cube, that's okay, but you know, um, actually it's a, uh, not the cube that I need, it's actually, I want to roll the dice. So the shape is the right, but uh, my, my, my problem is I really want to, to roll the dice, not just having a cube, no matter how good the API design is or how, um, how well it does, uh, it's done. So it's not about solving a Rubik's Cube API. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to make uh, the point uh, <laughs> And what was the problem that we did? It's, um, we had the, the application in the back end, we created the APIs, but uh, then we met the customers and we just didn't met their, their problems. There was no, uh, no, uh, there was no problems to our solutions. So, what we had to change is really to have the customer focus. We understand, okay, what's actually the, the customer problem? What's the jobs that he wants to get done? The processes that he has? And what are the pains there? And how can we relieve those pains? And, but well, still we have our applications, we have the APIs to our applications, like, uh, uh, yeah, nobody understands outside, usually of the, of the com uh, company environment. Um, so that was not a good uh, problem solution fit. But what really works, maybe probably you, you know that, that's uh, the value proposition canvas of Osterwald. He, he uh, invented the, the business model canvas. And really what helps is to define out of what you have, the uh, value proposition like the pain relievers that really focus on the, the pains that the customer has. And where comes the APIs here? Well, it's certainly not here. But they actually, it's here in the front. So the API is not an interface to your applications, it's really an interface to your value propositions. And that's what we learned and uh, now actually applied to all of it. And um, so it's the interface to the value proposition. That's the important thing. 
And uh, ultimately, yeah, it's um, not about an interface uh, to the backend applications. It's, it's about the interface to the value proposition. And that's why we don't call it the uh, APIs. We call it VPIs, value proposition interface. So um, this is a nice concept, nice idea, good uh, mindset. But how can you um, come from this conception to really make an uh, API product come to action? So um, I met this guy, that's uh, Ash Moria. He's, uh, he invented uh, the Lean Canvas and uh, wrote books on one Lean. And uh, we had a uh, long chat with him. And um, he has really um, great ideas about how to apply Lean Startup. The Lean Startup methodology looks like this. You have an idea, you build it. You get the product, you uh, put it on the market, and then you measure how the people uh, use it, the behavior. You get some data, and out of the data you learn to adapt the idea. So we, we applied it to the APIs. So we had a great API idea, what probably a customer would love. We built it, we put it on the market, uh, we measured some stuff, we learned it, then we wanted to change the API within two weeks. And the customers were, were pretty angry uh, on us because uh, it's an API, it's an interface, they have projects to integrate those APIs, they just can't uh, um, adapt to new APIs. So this is actually not something that works in the API world. So how can we make the, the ideas of really build, measure, and learn <coughs> concept uh, bring to the API world? And we found out that it's not about one circle, build, measure, run circle cycle, but it's about two cycles. So in the first cycle, we just prototype. That means we have a, a, an API specification, a Swagger file, a LAMO, whatever. We use uh, tools to uh, make some, some small calls. We provide some, some uh, mock responses. Then we go to the customer uh, and make uh, workshops, feedback collection. We show them the APIs. We, we challenge them. We ask about their problems, how they would uh, use it, or what they really need. It's really about the interaction with the customer. Usually, we, we have a, a, a form that they can check and fill out so some answers, but usually it's always about uh, the conversation that we have with the customers. And there, we really learn what are real the actual problems, what they need to solve. Then we come back, we will find the API specification or the interface and uh, um, <coughs> together with the customer. Then we put it in the backlog, and then it comes really to, to the API uh, engineering team who build it, also provide uh, logging and analytics functionalities, and then learn how their people really behave. And for instance, um, we had a nice product about to verify identities that uh, several customers are using, and um, we thought, okay, Swisscom has a huge market share, it's around 60-70%, and then for out of the, our API course, we saw only for 30% we could really provide uh, an identity verification. And you found out there's another backend with other users. It's the, about the, the business customers, not the residential customers. That also are uh, very important. Yeah, so um, we now have uh, the mindset, the value proposition interface, how to do the APIs. We, we saw how to really put it into action, the method. But uh, there's also a third part of the story that's the context. And let's say this, uh, this scale. It's your API, it has certainly some, uh, some capabilities like uh, uh, measuring the weight or comparing the weight of uh, certain things. And that's your business, apples. You want to, uh, to sell apples on the market, for instance. And of course, the API comes quite handy. You can uh, measure the, sell the, the uh, apples by, by weight and get the money. But this doesn't um, work in space because you need gravity to make the scale work. And the same, uh, um, same uh, is for, for the APIs too. So if you have an enterprise, you usually have here the strategy, the business strategy that directs uh, um, the money, who says, OK, which, uh, which project, which product I want to provide resources. And here comes the product development. And then here comes into the operations or the daily business. The point here is, uh, um, usually when we do APIs, we think about integration or architecture, and we are here. We are digitalizing processes, we simplify them, we make a, a process more efficient, and um, this can be easy, measurable. But uh, when the business uh, expects us from us to really transform digital company, really create new business models and these kind of things, 
here, this, this does, just doesn't work out. So we have to come out of the, let's say, the, the IT world and go into the business, or at least uh, try to combine it into the paper product management. Because here we can really change the, stra the strategy, the enterprise strategy, to say, hey, we have here new opportunities, how to develop our uh, company further, or we can really um, translate the strategy into digital API products <coughs> that really make the, the difference. And in the end, um, yeah, because um, here with, uh, with digitalization, with uh, optimizing business processes, and uh, with API, it just saves money. It's, uh, it's good to have an efficient, uh, efficient company, but really to, to make the difference with APIs, it's really about the digital transformation and create new, uh, new digital business models out of it for, for the API economy. And then um, that's uh, the end over to the API economy. Yeah. API economy. So we had a look to the, to the uh, methodology to uh, how we are able to uh, implement uh, good API products uh, with a low impact on customers, on early adopters. But as we said, it's important to, to understand the context because this is really the, the focus that everybody of us should have on the, on the APIs. So uh, we always hear that, you know, uh, that APIs are the glue of the digital economy, uh, that can open new business opportunities. Uh, that it's true, it's true, but only if you approach the APIs from the right angle. Um, usually, we, most of us, we make a mistake that is the one to consider APIs only as a technology and not as an asset to support our digital strategy or the digital strategies of our companies. And uh, you know, and still today, a lot of companies are struggling with this. You know, they want to transform, they want to use the APIs, but what does it mean? So, uh, the first step is to understand where your company uh, stands on the, on the digital transformation, the digital journey. <coughs> and, uh, you know, usually using a Gartner uh, approach, we identify three waves that can also be built one on top of the other. So the first wave is, uh, as we saw before, as we said before, having a focus on the value chain. So you use API internally to uh, optimize or uh, uh, improve or build from scratch your internal value chain, your internal processes. In the second wave, you are focused on creating API products. So API products to support your existing core products <coughs> to offer additional services to your customers. A sort of B2B. And, uh, that is the third wave, that is the last one, uh, that is really focused where your company is focused to influence the customer ecosystem. Let's see in, in details what does it mean. Um, because you know, uh, usually the, the companies that are focused on a value chain, so on the first two waves, they feel comfortable with a brand-centric ecosystem where there is the brand at the center, you have all the customers around, and uh, uh, customers uh, and their experiences are fully controlled by the customer, by, by the company. And uh, of course, in this context, the companies compete for the market share. So successful companies are the ones that are able to transform customers in fans. Uh, the little features and services control the customer experience, 100%. And, uh, API products are used to optimize internal processes or provide additional services. In the third wave, instead, we have a different, completely different playground that uh, we define as a customer-centric ecosystem, where you know <coughs> the, the companies are influencing the customer experience, being part of something bigger. Uh, the difference with the other is that companies are competing to forge the best partnership on the market. Successful companies are the ones that are open and connected. Companies play a part to influence the customer ecosystem and not controlling it. And API products are the building blocks of the digital economy. 
we will have some examples about this. But let's try to define an API product. <coughs> the API product is a product because it's offered as a service. So I think that we don't have doubts about it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's consumable through APIs. This is the definition that we used also in Swisscom and we, and we use very often in, uh, in, the, in the book. What makes a good API product? A good API product fits perfectly in the customer ecosystem, so it's a perfect piece of the puzzle of the customer experience. And even more, it fits on many ecosystems. But what makes a API product a great API product is the capacity to strongly influence the decision making of the customer. And uh, very often, to achieve this target, the product is adopted by a large uh, network of partners that are leaders in their market. <coughs> so, uh, another context here is that every industry will be disrupted, no matter how big your company is and uh, how big your, your market share is. Swisscom has the 65% of the market share in Switzerland in the telecom. <coughs> and anyway, Twilio, that I'm sure everybody of you know, uh, disrupted <coughs> our telecommunication business, uh, providing services, program programmable telco services, VAVIs is 100% API business, and uh, by the way, it consists, the business consists of 40,000 customers and strategic partners. Maybe this is the key of uh, the success. In our, small, uh, in our smaller world, uh, uh, we have a case study that is uh, a product that we, we launched at the beginning of the year, it's Mark Catalogs. And, uh, it's not really interesting what it does, you know, it's offering uh, additional, it's an adjacent product, so it's offering uh, additional value on our existing core products. But the interesting point here is the fact that only the almost 3% of, of our big enterprise customers are consuming this product directly. 97% are consuming this through their preferred partners that usually are uh, fleet managers, so companies in the fleet management business, and this was exactly our target customer, our target partner in our strategy, the definition of smart catalogs for another group. And another nice example is uh, what smart is doing. We had uh, uh, this uh, speech on uh, one API forum of Daimler, an internal event, and we discovered that they really got the point here with this uh, uh, ready to drop product. Let's see. With smart, ready-to-drop, online shopping will become even easier. Simply set your smart as the delivery address during ordering. In partnership with DHL, your order will be delivered directly into the trunk of your smart. Using your smart app, generate a unique TAN which you can then enter along with your address data while ordering. DHL Package Messenger can locate your smart via an app. The pre-installed connectivity box, paired with your generated TAN, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, by the way. The story is that the <laughs> DHL guy will arrive and he's able to open the truck of the, of the smart and put the parcel inside and uh, close it and the delivery was completed. Of course, this will never work in Italy. <laughs> but you know, it's really the, the, the concept that is nice. And, uh, and you know, and I think that 
this is a, a, a nice example about what it means to be part of the custom ecosystem. So, uh, it's important for us as a product managers to do the things right, to do the right things right. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we are writing the book, it's not yet finished, it's not finished, but uh, it consists, you know, of a, a set of uh, uh, topics that will uh, help you to build your API products <coughs> from conception to launch. But there are several topics that I don't want to waste a few minutes that we have to discuss about it. Um, and uh, so usually we will listen digital journey sentences. Uh, it's really strange because the digital journey uh, ingests some, somehow a little bit of relax. So can we really relax and enjoy this digital journey? The problem is that we cannot do it because it's uh, actually it's a, a, a digital race and uh, uh, we should start immediately to implement at least API adjacent products to support our core products in all the enterprises because otherwise we will be disrupted. We created a group on, uh, uh, on LinkedIn and uh, we ask you if you are interested to to join the group and uh, share your your stories and uh, keep in touch. Thank you. So